Hello friends! The new generation 911 992 GTS has been released and the motoring press are saying all the same nonsense they always say about this model. Ah, it's a great in between between the S and the, and the GT3. What complete nonsense that statement is. The GT3 is an entirely different model than the S um, and really the GTS I don't know that it's an improvement over the S. Porsche had such an opportunity here. As you know, I have been a bit of a GTS skeptic in the past with a lot of models because often they're just slightly tuned S models for a lot more money with a bunch of options on them and Alcantara. <laughs> and I've gone, this car is a marketing parts bin special at best. However, lately I've had to eat my words because Porsche have been producing the most amazing GTS cars and they've been my favorites. Starting with the Panamera GTS, which I originally looked at the specs and went, 15 horsepower over the S model? What a complete waste of money this car is. But then I got to drive it and ha, huh, turns out it was all a lie, a deception. This is a fantastic car because what Porsche actually did was that they only slightly detuned the car from the turbo model. So it was nowhere near the specs that they said. Uh, in fact, you could really hardly tell the difference between the GTS and the turbo and it sounded glorious. The engine reacted a little bit better than the turbo. It was the best Panamera they ever made. Amazing. I was completely wrong about that. The GTS Panamera, fantastic. Uh, and then recently the Cayenne, the same deal. They've taken the V8 engine out of the turbo and slightly detuned it. On paper it's massively detuned, but when you actually drive it you realize, ah, if you drive the turbo and the GTS back to back, there's no real difference. Both sound amazing, one costs a lot less, has some great options on it. Once again, the Cayenne GTS, a fantastic value for money. I definitely recommend it if you're looking at that high end. I recommend it over the turbo. And once again, with the Macan. Now the original Macan GTS was a bit of a dog to be honest. It was a slightly tuned version of the three liter S engine, that um, oil leaking, problematic uh, Porsche engine that everybody hates uh, and the GTS model just made those those problems worse so no one wants that car uh, so I was, I was a bit of a, a bit of a downer on the the Macan GTS but then when they refreshed it they put the engine from the new turbo the 2.9 liter engine that sounds so great and reacts so quickly supposedly detuned it but didn't actually detune it you drive those cars back to back and you realize ah, <laughs> they're exactly the same but put great options in like air suspension and so forth which made the GTS model of the current Macan the model to have. Superior in every way to the model above it uh, because of options, because of the engine, because of the sound. Yeah, just, just took a rather average model and turned it into a great model. So yes, across the range for those cars the GTS has been a big improvement. But let's talk about the 718. This is where the biggest jump has been. So Porsche produced the 718 GTS, the 2.5 liter engine, which had, I think it was 10 or 15 horsepower more, which was totally unnoticeable when you drove them, um, and put a bunch of options in, made it quite expensive. What a pile of garbage that car was. It sat on the dealership floors, never got sold. Got sold for 20,000 or 25,000 discounts sometimes on those cars just to get rid of them. Worst selling modern Porsche they have ever made. Just a disaster on every level. What have they done with the latest refresh on the 718? They've completely turned that around. They've taken that awesome 4 liter engine out of the GT4 and put it in the GTS. Supposedly detuned it but haven't. Um, and just made it a car that is drivable every day but sounds awesome, responds instantly. Arguably the best car within the Porsche range at the moment. The GTS 718's amazing. <laughs> the lines for those cars stretch back and of course those cars are going to hold their value so well because naturally aspirated, just a joy to drive. Arguably better than the models above them again, you know. The GT4 is an amazing looking car and uh, has all the bits and pieces but you know they're, they're harsh on the road compared to the GTS model. So I take the GTS every time. So yeah, Porsche have been totally turning around the GTS models and making them the best in the range. So they had the same opportunity to do this with the 992 generation 911, but they didn't. So what they could have done is they could have 
use the same magic that they did on all the rest by taking an engine from a car further up in the range, detuning it and putting it in the GTS. But of course they couldn't do that uh, from the turbo or the turbo S which is that 3.8 litre twin turbo engine because no one wants that engine in their car, that's a garbage engine, it sounds awful, they just can't really get that engine right. So detuning that engine and putting it in the GTS was never going to be an option, no one would want that car. But they have two other engines in the range, once again they could have just put the, the, the GTS 4 engine in there, maybe it wouldn't make as much power but it would sound awesome, oh, such a great engine. Or, ah, they could have taken the 3.8 litre engine from the GT3 and put it in there. Wouldn't that be an amazing car? Ah, oh, they, they could have weaved the same magic as they did with the 718, uh, detuned it slightly and made it a more friendly, uh, everyday road car, uh, unlike the GT3, which is really a harsh car to drive. I mean, it sounds amazing and it's just the, the most fun car to drive down a back straight or whatever. But day to day driving a GT3 is it's just a bit of a nightmare. Whereas if you took that engine and you put it in the GTS, oh man, that would just be the perfect car, wouldn't it? But no, they've taken the engine from the S and they've supposedly given it a bit of a boost. I don't know whether it's slightly bigger turbos like with the 991.2 or just a tune, I haven't looked into that. But most likely it's slightly bigger turbos, uh, which is not a good thing, unfortunately. Uh, they have, don't seem to have learnt the lessons from the 991.2 GTS, which everybody loves, but I hate it. And the reason I hated it is because there really wasn't, it didn't feel any faster, but you did notice the extra turbo lag. And of course, those turbos have been so problematic with warranty problems, it's, it just wasn't a great model. And it's true of this model as well. And what we're going to do is we're going to go through what you get with a GTS model, and what you're paying for that engine. Um, but really what I'm saying is, uh, you know, these cars, the, the S model supposedly is 440 horsepower, but the reality is uh, Porsche way understate their horsepower these days, so it's closer to 500 horsepower. So when you add 30 horsepower to 500 horsepower, it's barely noticeable. But what is noticeable is an increase in turbo lag. That is very annoying. What we all want is instantly responding engines out of our Porsche cars and I'd rather have 30 horsepower less and a more instant responding better sounding engine than 30 horsepower more. But people get transfixed about horsepower like oh my goodness yes this is going to have 30 horsepower more it's really going to be just like a slightly less GT3. <laughs> no it's not it's not going to be any more fun than an S. It's not, you know, at, this, at 500 odd horsepower, you're getting so much horsepower that it, it sort of detracts from the experience. And 30 or more horsepower over 500 horsepower, it's not improving the experience in any way measurable. Anyway, let's get on with counting up uh, what we get with the GTS package because sometimes the GTS package just like in the Macan GTS is worth it just for the options alone it's like getting a discount on the options so let's let's go through them first of all you get the four-way sports seats which is a $440 option next you get the sport chrono which is a $2,790 now this one's a little bit of a <laughs> yes you get sport chrono but if you brought the manual transmission, which you totally should, <laughs> uh, in the S or the um, 4S or the Targa, you'd get the Sport Chrono for free. That's the package they offer. There's no discount with the GTS. So really, depending on whether you're getting the, the PDK or the manual transmission, this is not a value add. Uh, next, you get the Sport Exhaust, which is $3,000. I think most people get the Sports Exhaust, so that's great. Next, you get the Sport Design package. This is a little more controversial because some people like the sport design, some people don't. I, I don't mind it at the front, it looks quite nice on the front, but on the back, eh, uh, especially in real life, I haven't been a big fan. But it's personal taste, you might love it. And so the $5,000 option you get thrown in with the GTS, maybe that's worthwhile for you. Uh, next you get the PDLS lights with the darker surrounds, $1,270, most people get that. And of course the clear lights at the back, um, which is $1,000. Also quite a popular option. And of course you get the silly little GTS sticker. <laughs> I don't know what value we'll put on that. We'll say $5 on that. 
Uh, there are other options within the GTS package which you can't get on the S, uh, the major one being the lightweight package which gives you the bucket seats, uh, removes the rear seats and the lightweight glass. That's certainly an option, it's quite an expensive option, but it's an option that you don't get on the S. And the only engineering difference between these cars, and this is another thing, every other car in the range has some major engineering difference uh, between them. The GTS is just really options apart from the brakes. Uh, they've made the front rotors on the brakes slightly larger, 480 millimeters, as opposed to the S. I'm not sure there's much value in that either because the S is so over braked anyway, but I guess it's a nice thing. Bigger brakes always nice, uh, but otherwise it's just the normal GTS stuff. The GTS interior packages, GTS race tech, which is the new word for Alcantara, and that's just a taste thing. Some people love that, some people don't. Black wheels, so forth. And speaking of the wheels, uh, that's the other big change as well. You get the center lock wheels on the GTS. Now, Honestly, I don't understand why center lock wheels are such a popular option because they are a frigging nightmare to live with. Um, if, you, if nothing goes wrong, they look great, but if you get a flat tire or you curb them, you're in trouble because no tire shop wants to touch these wheels. You always have to flatbed your car to a Porsche dealer, which if you live close enough to a Porsche dealer, no problem. But if you're out in the boondocks and you get a flat tire, and no local tire shop will touch it, this is the problem because it requires special tools to get these off that you can't carry around in the car. The center lock wheels have always been a bit of a, uh, are they a good thing or not for me? Um, and certainly I wouldn't ever want them on my car. But yeah, a lot of people love the center lock wheels. So who knows? So if we add up all of those options, the ones that we know the prices of, uh, it comes to $13,300. Now, is it really 13,000? Because maybe the Sport Chrono should be included or not, depending on whether you get the manual transmission. So really it could be $10,000, but let's call it $13,000 for a $20,000 price increase. So what are you doing? You're paying $7,000 for the engine. Uh, is the engine worth a $7,000 uptick in price? Mm, I would say no. Um, but for some people, <laughs> having, having 30 horsepower more is well worth $7,000. We Porsche people, we love we love to overpay for everything, so I can understand that. So yeah, that's, that's really where it really comes down to, is um, if you love all of the options and the style of the GTS, then certainly the $20,000 is going to be worthwhile for you. But yeah, this car is not the all singing, all dancing mini GT3 that a lot of people claim it to be. Uh, where would I put it in the range? Well, personally, because I'm not a fan of the, the engine upgrade, uh, and I'm not a fan of, of the, some of these options, I would slide it in below the S model. So base GTS S uh, is how I'd rank these cars, but I'm sure this will still be a very popular model, uh, even though I don't personally find that there's anything special about this latest GTS. I think it's a missed opportunity for Porsche. I really wish they'd done something special. What do you guys think? Put in the comments below. Do you think that a GTS is huh, amazing, like everyone's saying, they can't wait to get it? Or are you, eh, this, this, this is a bit of a missed opportunity. Now the other thing I'll say is a lot of people have been emailing me going, ah oh, Nick, I see the GTS is released. Or, ah oh, Nick, I see the GT3 Touring is released. How do I get in line for one of these? Can you help me, blah, blah, blah. No, I can't. And nobody can help you with this stuff because these cars, while they're on the configurator, have not actually been released. They don't get released until next year. And so if you go to a Porsche dealer, they're going to do one of two things. They're either going to go, go away, come back next year when we actually have some allocation for these, or, oh, we'll put, give us a deposit and we'll put you on a list. Don't be fooled by these dealers that do this trick, because a Porsche dealer, nice people as they are, are still a car dealer. They're not <laughs> putting you on a list and giving you priority. They are selling cars that they get allocations for to their VIP customers first, and to customers willing to pay over and above second, and then they might look at the list. All they're really doing is deposit collecting and keeping you on the hook because your deposit's with them. Don't do that. Wait until they're released and then start calling around dealers and make a nuisance of yourself until somebody gives you an allocation. Neither the GT3 Touring or the GTS are limited edition cars. There's gonna be enough for everybody. It's just a matter of being patient and being persistent. 
don't be <laughs> handing out $2,000 deposits to Porsche dealers to get you in, on, a, on a list which actually gets you nowhere. So that's my video on the GTS. I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. Uh, are you in love with it? Do uh, you think the, the styling and the, the options make the $20,000 increase worthwhile? Or, like me, you think, eh, this is a bit shit. <laughs> An S model is actually better value. Anyway, I'd love to hear. Let me know below. And I want to thank you all for watching my YouTube channel as always. Huh, who knows why you do that. Anyway, thanks from William and myself. I'll see you in the next one. Bye then. And if you're wondering where to acquire the ridiculous t-shirts that I wear in my videos, they're all here in my store, all your favourites, uh, including offensive stamps and my rapid dry towels as well. Yes, Nick Murray t-shirts, being a little inappropriate since 2016. <laughs>